Uh, we were expecting this. It's finally been confirmed, though, the postponement of the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games. That postponement will have far-reaching effects for Japan, political, economic, logistical among them. And all of this comes on top of any additional fallout that is still to come from the spread of the coronavirus and the impact on the economy. Joshua Walker is the CEO of Japan Society. It's an organization that fosters U.S.-Japan openness. Joshua, great to have you. Uh, you know, this is going to be a hit for Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, right? This is a man that came out at the closing ceremony in Rio dressed as Super Mario. So, you know, what does this mean for kind of the standing, the global standing of Japan, the economic benefit that we're expecting to get, as well as this leader's legacy? No, you're absolutely right. This is about Shinzo Abe's uh, legacy. This was supposed to be the cherry on top. Having gone as Super Mario to Brazil, having won and triumphantly returned, he's the longest serving prime minister of Japan. Now the question is, what happens if you kick this for another year, not just to the athletes that are disappointed, but to the Japanese economy and to Shinzo Abe's legacy in general? Uh, a lot of people in Japan are kind of uh, ready for change, but it seems like this year won't end. It's going to continue to 2021, even though we're calling it 2020 Olympics. And the deflation mindset, which was so hard to claw out of, even with extraordinary monetary policy and fiscal policy, is that the other biggest risk that sentiment, that public sentiment, that market sentiment, economic sentiment now just takes a real hit? Yeah, no, I have to say, actually, while this is bad news in the short term and it's disappointing for all of us to, to not see the Olympics this year, it's understandable given the pandemic wonder. I actually think the biggest risk we're, we're, we're thinking of here is what happens with Japan moving forward. Abenomics uh, kind of came out of the gates pretty strong. There was a lot of optimism. Now that the Bank of Japan and all the other banks, central banks out there, are firing as many arrows as they can, if this coronavirus gets worse and there's a lockdown, there continues to be uh, no economic trade, uh, Japan right Right now seems to be doing fairly well with the COVID virus compared to other places, it could get much worse, not because of Japan, but because of the global recession that we seem to be in. Joshua, talk to me more about the local economy in Tokyo. I know here within the United States, a lot of cities, frankly, protest uh, the, the games because we don't want the cost to outweigh the benefit. And it really is, is a big burden from a cost perspective. What does this now mean for Tokyo and the cost that they have put into uh, uh, to trying to hold the games there? Well, I think the first part is that a postponement has huge costs, as you said. Tokyo's a little bit different. This was kind of Tokyo's coming out party. The last time the Olympics were in Japan were 1964, the bullet train, all these great innovations. This was really meant to feature Japan's sustainability and being able to actually do a lot more working from home. You know, anybody who lives in Tokyo knows that July and August is the hottest, most humid time of the year. Uh, so it was going to be time that many people in Tokyo stayed home. But they wanted to showcase to the entire world that Japan was back in a big way and kind of on the globe scene. This puts a damper on things for sure, but I think that Japanese are really excited about this and in fact the world's going to need some type of celebration come next year after all this is over. Joshua, is it too soon to, to start talking about what this means for Shinzo Abe, some of his relationships with Trump, with some of the other G7 leaders? No, not at all. In fact, it's the right time to be talking about it, given that the G7 has already been virtualized. President Trump this morning tweeted out almost immediately his support of Shinzo Abe. In fact, I would argue the way this was handled uh, actually plays into Shinzo Abe's hand, because this could have been a long, drawn-out process where the IOC makes a decision a month from now. But Abe came out this morning and said, look, I've already talked to the IOC president. This is what's going to happen. We don't know the specifics yet, but it's clear that rather than having an Olympics with no spectators like they've been doing with sumo or soccer in Japan, this is going to be a very different type of Olympics. It's going to have a high cost to Japan, but hopefully it's, it's worth it in the long run. Joshua, I want to switch to the handling of COVID-19 in Japan because it's been really interesting and a little bit perplexing because we talk about Italy being hard hit with an aging population. Well, that's Japan as well. And yet it has managed at this point to escape with, you know, a fairly low level of fatalities. If you don't kind of count the Diamond Princess, the new infections have been pretty well managed as well. So in that sense, is there some kind of hope that domestically Japan could at least escape the very draconian, uh, you know, and economically damaging lockdowns that we've seen in most other parts of the world. 
Yeah, that's the billion dollar question in some ways. When you look at the kind of responses from the very draconian uh, Chinese quarantine uh, to now the lockdowns in Europe and the U.S., the perplexing one, the outlier is Japan. The number of fatalities has been astronomically lower. You can't hide fatalities. Now, of course, the testing may not have been as robust as next door in South Korea, but the other big thing is it seems that after that Diamond Princess crisis, they kind of really shook the Japanese establishment and Shinzo Abe's cabinet. They've learned from that mistake. They seem to be taking this in a lot more humble approach. Approach. And the real question going forward is, how is this going to affect the rest of the world? And are there lessons we can learn from Japan? I mean, honestly, Japan is about to become a fairly normal country by next week when the schools get back in session. People are still going to cafes, restaurants. There's social distancing happening, but that seems to be a uniquely Japanese phenomenon, unlike here in New York and other places where life as we know it has kind of come to an end and all of us are hunkering in place. Joshua, thank you so much for joining us. Joshua Walker, Japan Society CEO, there with us on the latest with the postponement of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. We are just getting the...